slightly more impressive resume thanks to their win at DreamHack Open uh, earlier this year. Um, so, so that's kind of the one that, uh, you know, makes you, makes you kind of really look at them, especially also adding that top four at Katowice. So they've been doing really well in the EPT, but no more speculation required, Vince. We are underway here in the pistol round. We're finally into our first round of the DreamHack Masters Spring 2021. And some Dai Young's going to kick things off with authority. Two headshots delivered. And just like that. G2 on the back foot, They're trying to bring the bomb towards the site now. They have Nico as a pivot point just outside of Palace. But the fact that they lost those two players down around middle of just a very aggressive push from some Dai Young has kind of thrown a wrench in the works. Ooh. Now Chopper removing Nico surely puts G2 in an almost impossible scenario. This fence is done and dusted. <laughs> Gotta get it in early. As it was that mid-aggression, right? We were talking about how you can approach Mirage a variety of ways. And so some Dai Young wasted no time with that mid-push. Had a bit of support from Mir and company, as well as Chopper towards the connector to kind of help him facilitate that push. And now it is just two remaining members of G2 just trying to send some prayers through with these pistols. But just Spirit not having it, connecting the dots on every shot they've taken, leaving Hunter very lonely with the Glock and Smoke Grenade over here by... This A ramp position and Mir will quickly take him out as well. A flawless victory for Spirit. Oh my goodness, that is a statement round. A flawless victory and fatality as it may end up being. And Sunday Young, by the way, just pushing straight up middle, getting two kills, lost no health in the process. That is as clean as you could possibly you ask for. Oh, absolutely. Great way to kick off your tournament here by popping off like that. Of course, it's important to stay in the upper bracket in this group stage for as long as you can. Give you the best chances to advance to the playoffs. So, you know, while these are best of ones and while, you know, this is early days, definitely a lot of value and coming out strong to kick things off as we are going to see weapons upgraded again mid-aggression. This time it's going to be from Dexter waiting from a pot flash perhaps from some Dai Young to take a swing on this corner, but also just kind of waiting to see a G2 to test the waters first, right? They don't want to push this, but with that MP9, you want to try to get up close in someone's face, try to get value out of that money bonus, and so I wouldn't be surprised as soon as they feel just the slightest hint of pressure at mid that they should look to pop and push, or maybe eventually Dexter may even look to try to get a flank off. Now, G2 hoping that they are going to outmaneuver Spirit, but also I feel like sitting back and waiting here can potentially draw out as much utility from Spirit as possible. So even if you don't get kills, you may be taking away some incendiaries. You're getting a couple of thousand dollars wasted as a result. Now they're going to start to push in. The fact that they haven't taken anyone down first and the positions are very good from Spirit does not paint a very pretty picture. Then again, it's just blocks. They got a kill to be all... All things considered, thus, getting a kill with a Glock, not too shabby. G2 couldn't have really hoped for too much more. Yeah, when you're when you're fully rocking out with your Glocks out, you're not anticipating a whole lot of things to go your way, just trying to look to get that round over and done with. Now the full AKs will come out across the board as well as full utility, and this is where they'll be able to instill their game plan a little bit better and actually pose a threat to Spear. This is going to be their first real test defensively. A couple of guys are going to be on FAMAS coming into this, so a little bit of a firepower advantage. Match is also still trying to get some value out of that SMG as we are going to see G2 trying to go for that quicker mid control into potentially a beast, but they have some apartments presence, but not overly committing to it. But this is a little bit different than most defaults, right? Their A side of this default is very passive as Nexa playing deep into T spawn. No presence at all at Ramper Palace. But mid control is finding its way in the hands of G2, but Spirit still with tons of utility, four incendiaries to their name. And although middle at the top and through underpasses in control of the T's, it's the choke points of connector and shorts that are completely absent of T control. And that will be an issue. And it'll force G2's mm. hand to expend a bit more of that utility to get that area as their own. You're right. I mean, if you're Nexa right now, you're not 100% certain how much territory that G or that excuse me that spirit has taken on that a side of the map while you've been playing so passive in T spawn now that did give them the benefit though of having those added resources to really make sure that they got control of middle you can see them trying to stamp out any type of cat peek with those ball tosses they try to you know get control of connector which they have done Dexter of course the where that being possible smokes coming in to block off jungle and G2 looking to spring onto a site making moves out but this is where some of the inferior weaponry may work against spirit I say that as Dexter drills in with two frags but there's Hunter and Nexa 
both stepping up to the plate just shy of 30 seconds the bomb's been spilled out is retrievable but some die young not overextending waiting for the rest of the troops to arrive and help him out from ct side the spray through the triple box is going to connect tons of damage onto hunter but doesn't finish him outright he's trying to finish off what they started and molotov on top of the triple box but hunter successfully gets the bomb planted and scurries away to tetris molly now tossed onto triple will be stalling the re-engage from spirit and allows nico to start to make a move around the back of them they know that time is of the essence the bomb already a third of the way down and nico looking to shut their eyes permanently into round three he's waiting his time he's biting and now he will strike big kill onto magics leave some die young in such an awkward position and to add everything else to the woes he's got no grenades no smokes no flashes and now no life g2 finally gets some success an absolutely well-designed split on that a site vents just making sure they got control of connector making sure they cut off catwalk access from spirit to not allow them to get that vision into middle didn't have to worry about their backside they could just focus on funneling in great smoke on jungle great pot flash lead the charge now Spirit did have a pretty decent defense set up. They had a player up close a ramp so that their site player could focus on connector. But once Chopper went down at ramp, the floodgates kind of opened up. Nico with a great flank through window. And again, just a really well-designed first attacking round from G2. I was very impressed with the calculations on their utility usage there. And their spacing was certainly fine-tuned. So that's a good sign for the future if they can keep that up. As once again, they're looking at that heavy mid control to kick off this round. Very similar setup to the previous. As a caveat tossed in, those spirit effectively were into a bonus so they can come straight back in with rifles. It is at the distinct lack of AWP, however, and that's something that you know that Dexter in particular mm -hmm. wants to get his hands on as soon as possible. Also, Magis is still on the SMG and Sunday Young is on a FAMAS. So, I mean, it still isn't a full, you know, decked out by Vince. I mean, they're still definitely lacking. Now, they are getting aggressive on A ramp this time around, trying to see if they can get some early intel or maybe disrupt G2. Or the other benefit of this is if they do that heavy connector play again, you have another anchor point to pinch back into a site with. You're not just, you know, stuck in the site or being forced to come in through CT spawn. You have another way as we are going to see Chopper full sending the flank right now. We also have a potential skirmish take that might take place here up close in the apartments with Magus and Amanek. A lot of moving parts, but it seems like the end destination will be on the B site. Jax will be ripping straight through in. The aforementioned MP9 now needs to hold its ground and it's Magix that puts it into the head. If Amanek drops down, can't quite get double. And that's where if he had an M4, you expect it to shine through and prevail with a double kill. As it stands, those spirit are up close enough to have a, a feasible swing and see if something connects in the process. Nexa and Jax are both feeling worse than wear at low HP and Nexa's has now been finished off. Chopper going in for the pre-fire, doing his due diligence and closing off these angles. There's no kit between the two of them though. Currently, they have to pick one up from a corpse of their teammate, but Jax and Nico say no. They hold on and G2 pick up their second in a row. And now money is gone entirely for Spirit. They all just have to concede into pistols. And again, Vince, I am impressed by G2's tactics right now. That round, again, the way it was designed was to look very similar to that connector push that we saw in the round prior. This time, they used it to go for the full-on B split. And their post-plant positioning and team play was also to perfection. And that's always the sign of having good strategy, is being able to mask your movements, being able to make things look similar, and it makes it very hard for defenses to read what your actual end game is going to be. And so a good foundation already established here by G2 on the attacking side. Now they get to get some MAC-10s out there, knowing that they're against a save. So that's if they can farm some extra cash. Well, these two squads have played Mirage three times. Although the third time, or the first, I suppose, whichever way you're looking at it, was back in 2019. But they've played it twice in 2021, and it's gone back and forth. A 16-6 victory right. for Spirit last time around, and a 16-8 to victory for G2 the first time. So really back and forth. And so far, G2 looking like they've learned a lot of lessons from that previous result. Yeah, their default, again, is definitely much different. You know, a lot of teams will just kind of play the 131. And Nexa is indeed that A factor on their default, but he's been playing from that stairwell time and time again, which means they don't really have any presence on the A side of the map early. But he's also making sure that if Spirit wants to get aggressive, he has it covered as he was able to do there, catching that kill, getting into the five on three. 
now they are setting up their smokes and flashes to perhaps go for a push here through connector once more some on cutting them off trying to equal the numbers a bit bomb now making its way up oh there's a taser oh it's not going to get used usp this range against mac 10 is never really going to work out well and g2 they take the lead since the pistol it's been pretty much one-way traffic i'm really sad we didn't get to see a zeus kill there it's early days, Young Dust. We got plenty of chances throughout the next couple of days to see his use kill. I can only hope. So we are seeing again G2 having a hot start here. And again, we keep seeing Spirit unable to get like a true full buy through. Still no AWP. Chopper having to go for FAMAS to get utility. And, and this is really starting to kind of put a hamper on things for them. Now this round we are seeing a little bit pivot. Nexa a little bit more, you know, looking to try to put some pressure on A. Op now in play for Nico on the T side here for G2. Looking for a pick at B. Missed a shot, but no harm, no foul. G2, who've been fairly slow on these T sides so far. Not really speeding it up as of yet. They know that that utility collectively on spirit is going to be very very low if they've gone for the superior firepower which they've tried to do their best and this is this is going back to that point that we were talking about before dust where yeah you're going for a bonus it doesn't quite work out but getting to round six still dexter nowhere close to having an orb and if they can see right. this you're looking at another two rounds at least yeah it seems like they could have maybe taken a bit more shaved off to try to get him that op but uh, we do see an exchange break out in middle here nico and mir both collecting an opponent in that mix we're seeing the a split being postured up here by g2 two players coming in for pals including the bomb carrier hunter has control of connector again that smoke is on jungle that we saw a few rounds ago looking to just slice and dice this a site with chopper really the solo defender for now but some die young and me are coming in as reinforcements just in time but they're getting stamped out 2v3 spirit slightly behind they needed mia to come up clutch one of their star plays has been dulled down and our magics definitely has it within him to clutch this first frag is given away for free but hunter at least gets the information traded up to the ak realizing they're gonna have a very good idea as to where he is no point playing shy get out there in amongst the frags magics molly towards firebox no one home and the fact that no one was there occupying the position for another freebie suggests that this round may have just come to a close. Whether he can save is yet to be seen, but G2's positioning, especially with a weakened Nico, they have no reason to push. They've already got the round in their pocket. Again, you're, what you're seeing here from G2 is they're very much looking to have Connector as kind of their launching pad. But once they get there, they have a variety of a different utility sets they've been using. Sometimes they've been smoking off jungle and pop flashing in. Sometimes they've been throwing a smoke from middle that blocks off CT spawn. So they're really kind of have this kind of flow chart once they find that position we've even seen a b split from that spot right so it seems like they have a game plan to just really focus up a mid control early and then use it uh to to you know try to mass things and condition their opponents and just bring out uh, a mixture of attacks and so far they have been very proficient with that they'll maintain the awp for deco plenty of rifles and utility go across they even have some reserve cash on several players meanwhile spirit in a really tough spot, Magis will be able to bring over that AK-47, but everyone else needs to be frugal. They need to get that op in Dexter's hand so soon, man, because that's the one thing that Spirit can do to try to disrupt this a little bit is maybe try to put Dexter in some more aggressive angles and try to cut G2 off from some of the free space they've been taking. You know, when Dexter first burst into the scene with Spirit, like he really did start to grab a lot of attention when that orb was in his hands. He seemed to be able to just pull off miracles left and right didn't seem possible. So that is going to be a massive power spike once they can get Dexter with the orb, which will be happening in the next round. Round loss, of course, is occurring now. As G2 will be mixing up that pace. I spoke about how slow they've been as of yet, but now already Molly's down. And already the first frag onto Chopper. He's been nullified at CT. There is a wraparound play for Mia, but there may not be anything, no foundation to pivot off if the rest of his teammates all subside and fall away. He needs both Dexter and Sundai Young to stay alive and get a kill would be excellent. That draws away an extra Ooh. pair of eyes towards the side and allows Mia to have more presence. Dexter, though, gets shut down from Jax. And maybe Mia can get a kill, maybe even two, but the chances of clutching now look incredibly bleak. First headshot, though, does go his way onto Hunter. 
And now some die young is scurrying around the back of the CTs, but it seems to me, Dust, that they're more setting up for exit frags than potentially winning the round at this stage. Yeah, it does seem to be the case, but Sunday Young takes out Jax there. There's still a little bit of time to play with, but Nico with the op catching Mir in the palace position. AK will get scurried over by Sunday Young, though Nico may be able to cut it off, but Sunday Young smartly tucks in here to make sure that that is not possible. So, yes, an AK comes over. There is finally money for an AWP for Dexter. He will collect it immediately. And, uh, yeah, they'll finally be able to put their best foot forward. But it's taken eight rounds to do it, Vince, to finally get a full buy. This has been such a struggle for Spirit this half. And, again, G2, they look so polished, Vince. Like, that round, they changed the pace. They made sure to cover every little gimmicky angle that Spirit could be playing in an eco with Molotovs to ensure they would be, you know, basically having a stress-free round. So, again, just I'm loving the tactics from G2. I'm loving their overall strategy. They, they seem to be so calculated, Vince. Especially when you consider that Spirit are no scrubs. You know, they're making Spirit look like an ordinary team, like a top 30 team, maybe. They're 10th in the wow. world, and for good reason, and Jax is just wide swung, takes the head off of Mia. And Dexter, who's been waiting so patiently for this AWP as we've been building up, well, he's already been tagged down to 17 instantly. Yeah, they're like he tried to go for some type of forward angle on the B apartments and got absolutely shut down. Not sure if it was utility or if it was the spray of Amanek, who's been kind of anchoring this B apartments position. Maybe even a leg shot came out from Nico at the op. I know he's been looking for picks on that side of the map time and time again in this default. So either way, Dexter has indeed been limited in his capacity. We do have Chopper again taking that angle at, at ramp. And I feel like Spear is starting to catch on the fact that that's been left open to them very many rounds. The problem is, is even though they've used it to set up flanks, it's never really worked out for them. They never really get there quick enough and... G2 have kind of, you know, made that decision. Yeah, that's a vulnerability, but we'll play around it. And they've done so perfectly as they're looking to set up once again for a B split. But look at how it's being sold as potentially another A attack with Hunter's presence in middle. This is really cool to see there. Just isolating Spirit from one another. The flashbang was so good. Although there's two players stuck in the back of the slime hole with Dexter, he's now been nullified. And Amanek goes in for more. Entering like a boss. 3K for Amanek and a sixth round to G2. Yeah, G2 just look like there's several moves ahead on the chessboard of Mirage right now. The first attempt from Spirit with an op and a full buy has been absolutely thwarted, and they're right back to a tough spot where there's not that much money to go around. There was a ton of money, I believe, on some Die Young. He will drop Dexter, the AWP, but everyone else will be on upgraded pistols, and so he's going to have to be the hero this round. Last round, he was shut down when he went for an early pick. This time, he's looking to go middle. Oh, misses the jump that he was looking for there. Actually works out in his favor, though. Relocates into the connector, knocks out Nexa. So finally, Spirit have the first pick. They have a, a first chance in what feels like forever. I don't think any of these six rounds that G2 have picked up, Spirit have had the first kill this game. And a second No, you're as absolutely well. correct. Yeah, that's kind of odd from Jax. He just kind of gave that one away for free. Dexter does take a lot of heat there from Nico and company in middle, taken down to... 19 HP, but still able to escape. They also did have palace control with Chopper with the Deagle, so a lot of things are seemingly going Spirit's way. They might finally take a round in one of those situations that you just didn't anticipate it, considering their resources. Big catch from Sun Dai Young onto Hunter. This round is just crumbling beneath G2. Uh, finally, we're seeing what Dexter has up his sleeve now. Take nothing away from the rest of Spirit, and I think G2 may have walked into a bit of a trap here. But is this the kind of round that Spirit can realistically rinse and repeat time after time? G2 will be looking at this as a bit of a blip on the radar, and of course it's not done just yet. You have Nico and you have Amanek, 10 kills between the two of them. It's more the lack of time that is being a bit of a concern towards me, and they've seen one up in the apps. But there's no reason to re-peak at this stage. Just make the call, go for the rotations. Molly is well placed, forces out the smoke. Now pushing through with a flashbang, and Magic's from Ax will put down Amanek. They know where Nico is, and they've dealt with him swiftly. Only one casualty and a ton of AKs taking out the round for Spirit. Yeah, an uncharacteristic round from G2 compared to what we've seen throughout the rest of the half thus far, just bleeding a couple of bodies over in middle thanks to Dexter's AWP and that was the X factor as you had stated Vince really one of the first times we've seen Spirit get an opening pick and it converts 
as they do get their third round on the board, trying to keep this gap as close as possible. G2 immediately called tactical timeout. I love this. Ice the kicker. Don't let them build momentum. Get your heads back right. Calm everyone back down. Their overall game plan has been spot on. Just get back to your roots coming into this next round. I think making sure that they you know, have that window covered is probably something they'll be discussing. That's really one of the, the few rounds we've allowed. We've seen them allow a window to just be a free peek for Dexter. And so I imagine we might be seeing a smoke coming out from T spawn to block that potential as we come into the next. I'm sure G2 wants to get right back to winning ways to kick things off as we do now get into the round. And indeed, I do see that smoke for window being set up from T spawn this time. Yeah, it's a classic bit of utility that T sides definitely need to administer, especially when you're against an AWP that this set uh, scary. You could start seeing maybe Spirit throw in the Molotov to extinguish it in an off angle, allowing them the free passage to still peek in. This is something the Fallen did way back when. Ooh. Triple nade stack from Spirit. They are getting really hot and heavy at middle. The problem is G2 had pivoted vents. They're going for a heavy palace flood out, and they had the perfect utility to kind of allow them to come through, though a smoke has stalled them for now. They will have to re-divert all of their players, actually, they leave no presence in Palace. I thought they might leave one behind, but no, they all have to come back to T-Spawn and basically hit the reset button and start from scratch. They've already burnt a heavy amount of utility. They only had two smokes left and just a few flashes. So they kind of lost out on the utility war there and definitely got caught up in what they were trying to do. But they will just be able to reset here. It seems like A is still the intended target. Definitely still have the smokes to block off stairs. NCT spawn or whatever they think is best. But uh, that was a nice little kind of small victory for Spirit in the early round. There's not a massive amount of utility for Spirit, but they do have two incendiaries left. And really the emphasis is on G2 to make the next move. 35 seconds. Can they get this light timing window? As some die young moves away, Chopper now gets aggressive towards Palace. An integral frag goes the way of Jax. But now Dexter, perfectly poised on CT with his AWP, will let it do the talking for him and try and dull down and suppress G2. They're not going to put out just behind the first casualty of Jax. They're going to stall this one out a little bit longer. Big frag from Hunter, oh, wow. and there's Nico as well with the AWP. And in doing so, probably just gives G2 a seventh round. Indeed, yeah, G2 able to weather that early storm. Great pick from Jax off Palace, as you said, but I feel like there must have been some type of miscommunication there from Spear. I don't know if you caught that, Vince, but Dexter having the AWP on the CT slope had a good angle on site, but then he turned around to check his flank in CT spawn, despite the fact that some Dai Young was in window room and, and basically, you know, was... was, was insurance that that couldn't be possible and when he did that was the moment that g2 started pouring more utility towards ticket booth not allowing dexter to get an angle back onto the site as the bomb went down so i do wonder if maybe there's a bit of chaos in spirits comms there either way g2 have been surgical on this t spot this t side everyone seems to be popping off the frag distribution is pretty tight and again, the way that they are carving out these sites, the way that they are using their utility, the way that their spacing and team play has been on display here, is that of a polished team, Vince? Is that of a well-drilled team that, that seems very prepared? And this is uh, definitely the way that G2 wanted to kick things off. Yeah, and it, it just harkens back to what we were talking about before as well, Dust, that th this is an incredibly well-oiled machine from G2. And the last time that we saw these teams play each other, which wasn't a huge amount of time ago, it was like a couple of weeks, maybe. Uh, the 18th, yeah, actually. They lost 16. Yep. They got absolutely blown out of the water. This is a complete different look from G2. Yeah, just when you think of some of the players on this team that make up G2, it makes you feel like they would play like a more loose aggressive scrappy type of play style right like you have a lot of individually talented players who have a history on playing on teams that did play uh, a system that was a little bit more prone to just like individuals being left to their own decisions and uh, just playing a little bit of a looser system but what you're seeing from g2 in this match right now is that of a very different kind of team a team that seems to be taking those star talents and putting them into very focused roles and it seems to be syncing up nicely right now. Again, it seems like they are all very much on the same page. 
And again, I'm loving how they're conditioning their opponents, how they're masking their movements by using similar map control and utility, but having a lot of variations they can play from it. But we are going to see Dexter still on the AWP. Seems to be warming up a little bit. Up to nine kills now. It's tied for best on the server. Let's see if he can get going in this next round as well. well some die young, maybe will be called into action to get some aggression going in. Has probably been the standout player for me. Dexter's tried his best, but he hasn't really had too many opportunities. There's some Dayoung that kicked off the pistol with those two crisp headshots. As Mia does spot the run boost for Jax over on middle boxes. He'll relay that information, bit of shrapnel damage to Jax, but he's okay. Down to 63, but already Spirit are going for a very quick rotation. And have a look at this. Three plays over on the beat, two of which are going through apps. Yeah, they're trying to come up with something different here. Mir trying to play aggressive on the catwalk position, looking to see if there will be some type of underpass play. Some die young, able to grab a kill. I believe that might have been a window boost attempt from G2 that has been absolutely busted up. And that might slow G2 down a bit. They still are getting some good control, though, of connector side. They have to worry about Mir, though. He could swing from ladder room at any moment in time and perhaps catch them behind. Amanek has to cover Nico here to allow Nico to keep getting angles with the AWP towards jungle and towards spawn. Some Dayong actually will now slot into that jungle position. Now I'm just making sure that no one's in the smoke and window. G2 looking to pounce on A, but again, what Chopper having this forward angle on A ramp and Dexter being there with the op already, it seems like Pierre are well prepared. And also the bomb was dropped way back towards middle. So they already were locking a player. They have to send another player away and they're just being ripped to shreds, just bit by bit, piece by piece. Next to the only player that's got any success, but it feels like it's too little too late. And Magix with the SMG will be upgrading to the AK. Finally, Spirit looking like their old selves. Yeah, again, I think there was some type of window boost caught early that kind of disrupted G2's you know, game plan going into that round, but also just great work from Spirit, just poking and prodding at G2. G2 looked a lot more disjointed that round due to some of the stress that they were feeling in the mid round. And so Spirit starting to now kind of go toe to toe with G2, kind of exchanging some rounds here as we start getting towards the end of the first half. And we actually do see G2 finally the ones that are a step behind with resources. Just the Mac 10 and Deagle on a couple of their players as again, match just baiting out that op shot towards B apartments, getting that Intel on where G2 had that sniper positioned. Once again, we do see Jax trying to establish a mid control with Nico. Might see an optical breakout here, and it's gonna go to Dexter. The heavy hitter has been suppressed and silenced in spirit. After that timeout, seem to start to pick up a little bit of pace. Dexter up to 10 kills. Now I'm watching the window. We've already seen, as you touched on before, Dust, a few attempts at getting in with that boost. We're talking about how G2 look like they're on the same page and it was Spirit that really had to prove to us that they can still hang. Even if Spirit were to win from this point forward and get an 8-7, keep in mind the last time these teams played each other, it was a 10-5 half for Spirit on the CT side. They picked up 10. This is such a, a different direction where the game is going, but they can course correct. No, you're absolutely correct. They're starting to get that done here. These last couple of rounds, they're starting to make their presence known. Again, we're seeing G2 look for that heavy explosion up connector, however. But Dexter's op is right there. He's got some coverage from Sun Dayong to focus up. Two frags go down. Nearly gets a third. They're just walking out one by one. Nexer and Jax with 18 seconds to go. I've got to get kills. They just picked up two. But Dexter's still stuck at the back of the site. And as long as he lives, it funnels away the team's attention from the real threat, which is Sun Dayong and Sandwich. And now Dexter comes up for his 4K in the round. Spirit, it was a little bit dodgy at the end, Dust, but they got it done. Indeed they did. And that attack just looked a little bit less explosive than what we saw earlier in the half from G2. They kind of got stuck in connector for longer. And we've been talking about this throughout the entire game, Vince. Spirit have consistently looked to get aggressive towards that A ramp. And they're gifted that because Nex is playing that more passively on the default. And what that's allowed them to do is have Dexter be able to very comfortably put that op on counter, knowing that, you know, his ramp is covered, that he's not going to get blindsided. And that has really opened up more opportunities now for Spirit defensively once G2 start committing to these late round executes. And now they have to do more with less coming into this round. Worth noting that 
G2 with this lineup have historically been better on the CT side. About a 40, or excuse me, a 54% win rate on CT compared to a 48% on the T side. So that's just kind of something to keep in mind as they've already had a pretty solid attack. But looking like this one, Michael Despierres are working towards the tie. Hmm, that's a very interesting stat. So it could be a case of the best is yet to come here, Dust. And they're already in a pretty decent position as it stands. Hmm. Spirit, though, this round, surely a formality. Last yes. time they were up against pistols and mainly glocks, it was only Nico that picked up a frag. And other than that, it was just smooth sailing. So you expect more of the same here. Yeah. Also, Spirit, with this five, has been a bit better on the CT side in the handful of Mirage games they've played, but not by much, I would say. It's uh, very close. Well, this round should be anything but close, and Dexter and Chopper are making sure that that comes to pass. Next up, at least puts the P250 to use, the so $300 well spent, but Spirit have now drawn the deficit down to just one. Definitely a solid recovery here from Spirit, having now won the last three out of four rounds, if I'm not mistaken. So definitely, as you said, shrinking that gap on the scoreboard before we transition sides. Still a chance to maybe even win the half, give themselves that slight edge as we transition sides. But G2 now on full AKs. No op for Nico, and they're going to pick up the pace, it looks like, Vince. Smoke's already down at Jungle and Stairs, but these incendiaries have slowed them down, but they're going to extinguish and push forward. They're not respecting the nades. They're going to push straight through, and maybe they should have respected because they're being blown a piece by piece from G2. They're now pushing their way through, though, and Nico's at least got himself the one kill. Maybe there's still a way back into this round. They the bomb's the bomb. been dropped back at T-Spawn. This basically isolates Nico into a 1v3 for a few moments, but actually, he decides, ah, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe push the B-site instead. Whoa. Assuming that an over-rotation has come to pass, and that's exactly what's happened. However, now Team Spirit are realizing that, and they're saying, nope, Sunday Young, go across to B and try and fend this one off. Yeah, it looks like Nico will get the plant, Vince, but just the fact that we already see some Dayong on the flank through B apartments and the rotation coming in, this is going to be troublesome for Nico. He's trying to find a new angle. Oh, the aim was just slightly away from him. To be fair, though, he was getting double peaked anyway. Exactly. Probably didn't matter. 77 the score. Man. I, I mean, on the one hand, I respect that G2 are trying to, you know, keep the variety alive in the sense that they're, you know, picking up the pace, they're, they're trying to attacks, but that one got absolutely busted. The problem is they haven't really tested A very much. So I feel like they don't necessarily have the best idea on how Spirit have set up early in the rounds at A. They might know that they've been aggressive at A round due to some of the flanks that they've seen throughout the game, but they just didn't have quite the feel of what they were up against there. Trying to come to the utility just did not pan out. Three players in connector from Spirit. This does leave them a little bit vulnerable if a full-on execute were to come to pass, and now G2 will be pushing through. This time, no incendiaries to greet them on ramp. They will be spilling out, but it's next that spills the blood of Jax. Chopper also chips in for Nico. There is one kill in retaliation, but that probably won't be good enough for G2. They are throwing in the flank from Hunter as he moves into B, bypassing any players. But the fact that the bomb is still in ramp and look at Hamanek's position, he's completely screwed, comes out with a big headshot going to some die young, but he can't add to that mantle. It does keep Spirit interested though, and now Hunter's wrapping around the back. He's got in Kitchen. The idea is to end on B side and have Hunter as that first pivot point to try and take some kills and be as much mm. of a nuisance as possible. Yeah, they need to find a way to get Nexa. The problem is he's going to have to deal with a 1v1 with Mir no matter what happens here from Hunter. And Hunter is now also getting pushed behind by Dexter's AWP. He's basically trapped in the corner. Time is dwindling, and Nexa caught the kill onto Mir. That is massive. That gives him a chance now. As we can see, Hunter cut off the rotations in spawn. The bomb makes it into B. Nine could very well just rip through both players, and it does. G2 will be leading at half times thanks to a Hunter clutch. Rejoin us in the second half to find out how this ends fights throughout the course of that round and they will net the benefit of tying the game up and getting onto the rifles and the one mac 10 on samir we do see the force up from g2 a scout from amonect pistols upgraded on all the other players so they're definitely going hot and heavy into this round but that scout has already been absolutely tossed to the side there forcing him out the window position making him a very vulnerable target in the future and now 
if you're Spirit, you know what you're up against. You know that G2 have force. The problem is you don't know how they've rolled the dice. We do see G2 with the A stack. Spirit could bypass it, but it just all comes down to how Connector and Catwalk play out for Spirit and where they feel the most presence. Magic's down to 31 will be also wielding the bomb. This kind of a position you typically want that Mac 10 to be the first player in. And well, Chopper knocks on the door and he takes quite a few bullets through it in return. Down to 30. Molly also tossed off the short smoke just behind it. Now Jax gets his head removed instantly from Dexter. A hell of a shot. And G2 in the current formation, they may just pull the plug. This might just be a save and try and rinse and repeat for the next round. Yeah, that's kind of the thing. When you go for a gamble like this on a stack and you've done the force buy, it does just make sense to carry it over to the next round, try the same thing again. They, they had a couple opportunities here, right? They got a couple of scout picks on the chopper, and Magic's trying to set up some assists, but when B folds like that, if Jax maybe could have gotten a kill or two at Beagle before going down, it would have encouraged G2 to shuffle over and give it a shot, but with him just going down clean, it will be Spirit taking the lead. And as we've already discussed, just, you know, give it a shot again in the next round. Try to put that scout somewhere else. Try to see if you can cause a bit of a ruckus in the camp over at Spirit. So, Dust, what do you make of, of this whole situation currently with G2, with the Orpa? Because obviously Nico takes it a lot on the T side, but we're seeing Amanek pick it up more and more on the CT side, currently has the scout. Right. Are you a fan of this? Do you think it's a, a position where he really will shine, or is this just more of like a supportive role? Yeah, it's kind of interesting because there's not too many elite level teams that have been able to make things work without like a true primary opera. Like the, the one team that comes to mind that kind of got it done was maybe like a liquid in 2019 and 2020 where Nitro was, you know, fairly the, the primary opera. But over time, you saw like Stewie 2K kind of slowly take over more of those responsibilities until they brought Fallen back onto the team and kind of went away from that system. So, yeah, there's not too many teams that could make that work. Like all these CIS teams pretty much have a power opper. You've seen Kadian come alive for Heroic as, as a really strong opera this year. Obviously, Device was was, was huge for Astralis. You think of Simple, you think of Ziwoo. Uh, again, a lot of teams really rely on that, uh, you know, primary op is kind of like just a, a foundation to play from. And to not have that is, is workable, but it can come back to bite you in certain situations where maybe the op could be the X factor, and if it's in a player's hands who isn't, you know, hasn't been through as many reps as a primary opera would have been right in certain positions or in certain situations, it, it could really kind of hurt you. Um, but it, it also makes you a little bit more dynamic, I guess, you know, to be able to be comfortable in five rifle setups. So hard to say, really. We'll have to wait and find out to see what G2 elect once they have the money to go for it however as we were talking about before with that four player save in the last round it does give them the opportunity to wield the aforementioned scout and a few deagles in play with the cz three sets of kevlar also at disposal of g2 so spirit know they have to tread lightly they know four players survived they know it was a force by round and it looks like they'll try and hit b again this time hunter is going to be joining them but it's another one player by themselves all by their lonesome with a four player on a and this is the kind of situation where you don't really want to just hold on to a scout. You'd probably want to upgrade it to the likes of M4s and potentially more. It's that Kevlar that they may be more anticipating and enticing in towards a save. Yeah, the smoke and head armor for Nexa, you know, keeping a D glass a secondary into the next round is probably worth it. Uh, you're absolutely correct. Amanek, though, this, with him having 3350, the scout is definitely more expendable in his hand. So holding up more of a forward angle inside kitchen does make some sense. See if you can try to pick up an exit, but. Spirit, not going to allow that. They're all backtracking through B apartment, so they will not play into the hands of these weapons kind of sitting back over towards kitchen and window room. It looks like a flawless victory is going to be in the cards here for Spirit as they back off. Somebody on catching jacks there on the catwalk. And so, indeed, they will take the lead. They're up 10-8 now, and again, they get to carry over all these weapons. Their money is really jumping to good heights. They'll keep the Mac-10 in Magic's hands, who has been kind of favoring the SMG. He actually does drop it for the AK, though. Mine as well. They have plenty of money to spend. Op will now be in play for Amanek. Full rifles for G2, and so it's our first real test of the second half. Yeah, he got rid of that scout so quickly to pick up the AWP, understandably. The rest of the troops will be coming through with, as you highlighted, tons of rifles. Mia, though, flashbang through. Very aggressive plays. 
And it's not like he's completely alone. Dexter's just behind him as well with the AK, but he's already moved up towards Connector. Oh, this is going to be boding so poorly for G2 and Amanek. Just off the back of picking up the AWP has been suppressed and he'll be scratching his head wondering how the hell they pushed up mid that fast. Yeah, definitely a different look that round from Spear compared to what we saw all first half long from G2, just really being much more swift, you know, going for the dry peak, going for that high speed, and some die young catching Jack's jiggle peeking in this B site. We see Hunter putting some utility down to try to slow the progress down of some die young. Meanwhile, Nico able to catch Mir out towards middle. So starting to try to get the numbers back. Next to getting a ramp control. Pushing it back. Nico now stuck in window, but smoked off. And we are going to see Spirit start collecting together inside these B apartments, looking for a potential B split play. Chopper still keeping presence in middle, keeping these players interested. It's all going to really come down to Hunter. He smartly backed off. He, he wants to just try to catch a kill, maybe play for the retake, as we do see Nexa making that flank. Great kill from Nico in mid. There's that fluidity that you were talking about before, the versatility. Amanek goes down with York, well, no problem. Nico can pick it up and pick up the slack, albeit down to 26. 20 seconds to go with, though. It's gonna be enough time for the post plant to come to fruition. Magics, a flash into the market. They're trying to buy up enough time for this rotational player to come through. And if Magics had gone down to the hands of Hunts, that may have changed the attention away from the player in apps towards the site. And that's where the rotation, the flank, could have stuck the landing. <laughs> Excellent hold. Spirit, pick up another. Man, if I'm Hunter, I'm fuming. Because he was just lighting magics up there with the M4 from Kitchen. And then that just steps out on one tats and says, nah, I'll have this one. 30 HP to spare. It's like Nexa may be able to cut off the exits here. And he lines up too. Looking for another. But Dexter will not allow that to happen. And they are not really too concerned with rebuy and events. They have so much money. They must have invested in GameStop early. <laughs> no, you're absolutely spot on. It looks good. You know, oh, nice two headshots. Then you look at the money like, oh, okay, they're, they're completely fine. Even after a buy, everybody is around $3,000 or more in the bank. Whereas G2, same definitely could not be said. They will hold on to the AWP in the hands of Nico, but that's basically where the good news ends. Yeah. That is a fair point. Nico looking to get aggressive and pass with the op. Definitely is a play that can net some benefits. Unfortunately for him, no one's home. Oh, Hunter, there should be a freebie onto Dexter, though. No one watching middle. He was so aggressive out there. And now Mia will at least avenge him. That seems like a little bit of a lapse of communication. Maybe the time he just worked against Nexa has the MP9 tailor-made for close angles, but not against full Kevlar. And he didn't even get a chance. Chopper just put the bullet in his head. Three on three. And G2 making a real goal yeah. of this, though. Seeing the buy, I thought they had very little chance of getting anything done. Nico has to be careful because he doesn't know if there might be ramp or palace peaks coming soon. So he has to kind of really position himself smartly. He does indeed slide over towards jungle with the AWP. Now they have all their bases covered. A couple of players still only on to Deagles, but again, they're playing this pretty smart. Bomb will be picked up here by Spirit. They're going to go ahead and go towards A side, but G2 have put themselves in safe positions, and Nico still has that op where he can find sightlines onto site. Now, there is one smoke available. That's going to be Mir. He could block off Nico's op, but it all comes down to timing. Oh, the timing is so brutal as well. You hit the nail on the head, as does Chopper as he passes the bullet between the eyes of Nico, and that is the round done. Just a millisecond later or earlier, and Nico probably gets to pick onto either stairs or onto connector, but that is Counter-Strike. It is a cruel game at times. Yeah, it just seems like that's kind of the inexperience of the op, just being caught in no man's land and just not, you know, just settling on a position and holding it. A little bit of scrambling going on from G2 there. You feel if Nico just takes an angle and holds it, that he has a much better chance of just catching the side cross but got caught between two mines and got punished for it. Full buy though, now back in effect for both teams here. Key round though for Spirit. You feel like if you win this, you force G2 back onto another state. That's where you have control of the game, Vince. The, the momentum has truly pivoted. G2 were destroying on their T side early in that first half. They were building up a solid lead. Now it's all gone. And again, if Spirit wins this round, you fancy their chances to sprint towards the finish line because the economy is just not there for G2. Oh, no doubt. I mean, they can see the finish line right now. And G2 know that they are multiple laps behind. They're hoping that Spirit trip over, they fumble it. Let 
G2 back into this. But when you look at the utility, two incendiaries with well over a minute to play with, Spirit are posturing just outside of ramp and palace, and additionally are now smoking off middle. So that control will be coming in, and this is this is almost like a boa constrictor just slowly tightening its grip on the CT side. He could gonna try and burst out though, and in doing so, some die young is gift wrapped to free frag. Amanek, the only player that's bounced back. There's a ton of damage that's been done, but he misses his second opportunity. And with that missed shot, the round may very well follow, especially as Chopper is laying Jax to rest. A ton of flashes. Pure and utterly blinded is Amanek. Finally comes back in with a bit of action towards Sundai Young. Good shot through the boxes on Tamiya, but he's no near in good enough position to feasibly clutch this round. And Chopper, well, he'll pick up three. Yeah, this seemed like their bets were all being hedged on what Nico could do with that peek into the palace. To his credit, he was able to get palace control a couple of times earlier on in the half, and so maybe he felt that there would be at most one player he'd have to face there. Unfortunately, he sets out into three who were well spread out to where he couldn't really line up a spray down or, again, he gets put in a situation where he's caught between a bunch of mines. And yes, we do see that Spirit logo looking looking fresh. I am digging these jerseys actually from Spirit. Look at this yeah, guy. I do like them a lot. That guy was creepy behind the... the he's just there. hiding bet bet yeah, between man. the boards, just chilling. Just yeah. staring, <laughs> staring the camera down. That'll get mean, of course. That's what got Spirit back into this matchup. They Memes. threatened if, if they didn't, oh. then, you know, the sky was going to be unleashed. Ah, okay. Got it. Full circle. Yeah, I, I definitely censored myself quite a bit there, Dust. You know, it's only the first day, first game. Don't want to get fired the first game. Why not? Push the limits. So we see G2 taking kind of a halfway approach here, right? Not wanting to put all their eggs in this one basket, but give themselves a fighting chance by getting a couple of upgraded pistols and a scout out on the field. Utility, though, pouring in at connector, kind of blocking them off a bit, but one smoke went deep, so maybe there's a chance for G2. Oh, Jax okay with a deagle, puts down one, but there's no follow-up damage, and Hunter was smoked off. He wanted to wide swing out. Now he's got the opportunity. Speaking of unleashing, Hunter finally springs into action, and G2 have something to get hype about. The bomb drop here is horrific for some die young, and to add to his woes, he's been smoked off. Still tons of time left, and money as well to justify going in for this. So the round may not be over just yet, but G2, courtesy of a beautiful play from Hunter, they've got a real chance. I would say they got more than a real chance, Vince. I would say this is pretty much guaranteed at this point with the bomb being down in the location that it is. It's going to be hard for Sun Dayong to isolate some 1v1s and somehow get bomb possession back. Hunter will finish it off there with the AWP. Just a brilliant round from G2 just playing off each other with the aggression off Cat, but again, it did come down to kind of a miss smoke near connector from Spirit. It gave G2 a little bit more freedom to get angles on middle from connector side, set up some crossfires, and they will yield a huge result, a victory and some free weapons. AK going over to Nico, out for Amanek. That went perfect, and that could get them back in the game. They need to use it as a launching pad. They cannot get reset. Precisely, and that is the chance that I was kind of touching on. Not necessarily the round, I feel like, as you, it was pretty much the guarantee. It's in terms of the actual match itself. I think that gives them a springboard. Yes. It gives them an opportunity, but it will be fleeting. And you better believe if you don't make the most of it, you'll be put down. How was some Dai Young afforded the chance to even wide swing with an aid anyway? That was such a strange <laughs> moment, but Amanek puts him out of his misery. Indeed, he does. He does take, you know, a little bit of heat on his way, but. Uh... He'll settle for that, I'm sure. Smokes go down at middle, as we do see Spirit trying to reel this one back in. Bomb has been left behind, though, really deep in the B apartment, so they have to go back and grab that. Does leave them a little bit stranded. They are able to get control of ladder room, however, so the B split is definitely in the cards. His three will be coming through, but Op is still here from Omnic. The problem is, is he's got no one able to hold Cat for him, so he has to divert his attention there with the Op, which means he's gonna... It's all going to come down the timing once again. Now, Hunter may be able to come in and help cover the balcony so we can focus on Cat. So this will help the defense out a bit. I'm going to molly towards site. But they're all spilling out of the apps already. But it does bottleneck them into the embracing arms of Hunter, who's really come alive in these last couple of rounds, as has Amanek. 3 HP left, already 2 kills, and 2 more players to deal with, and Amanek holds the line one more time. Dexter finally will get the man, but there's only 14 seconds, and it's going to be 
as if he has control over the bomb, and Jax will be coming round from Catwalk. G2 put rounds back to back, and well, they've actually almost got Spirit into a, a full on economic downturn. Yeah, they are chipping away at the nest egg that Spirit had been building up when it comes to their economy. Hunter rotating at the perfect time with Nexa to kind of free up Amanek to not have too many responsibilities at once and able to set up some nice crossfires there to send another round through that puts them to 10. As you said, they're they're finally maybe going to put Spear into a save if they can win this round coming up. A Spear again trying to pick up the pace on the fast B play, again trying to get some Dai Young in a four position as quick as possible in those B apartments. He's done just that, but they've been slowed down by some counter utility, but now they will press in. An explosive Counter-Strike now from Spirit, but G2, they have the Diffuse Explosive. The bomb has also been dropped out in such an awkward position. They're already smoked off. Damage to Mia, but very important that he held on to his life. If he were to fall, that would have been the wraparound play. Could have been coming into effect from G2, and that constriction would have been getting ever so tighter. Plenty of time left, but again, mm. thus, it's all about that bomb position. Like, Spirit can't fake anything. Right. They just allowed to stack four plays on B they side. They have no utility G2. either, so they can't flush you know, exactly. anyone out this fan position. G2 can just reinforce the site comfortably. They they have Nexa making sure they aren't being flanked from some type of window room play. So, I mean, they have all their bases covered. It's going to take brute force alone for Spirit to crack this open, and you're not favoring their chances. Need to get out the sledgehammer to smash through one of these walls and this defense. It's looking like a fortress for the time being. The siege now will be coming to an abrupt end as Hunter with the A1S is silencing Spirit at an alarmingly fast rate, as will Nexa. G2, three rounds on the bounce. And finally, that money that was so plentiful has been brought back to Earth. No, no this is definitely now stiff competition once more. No longer the formality that it seemed to be forming as Spirit looked well in control of the game there, and it seemed like they had G2 at the breaking point. One more victory, considering G2's economy, would have likely sealed the deal, in all honesty. But now that's all gone. Now they're the ones saving. They're going to be on a deco here. Dexter with the full save. And G2 are very likely going to tie this game up, Vince, if they can win this next buy round. So, I mean, this is, this is all of a sudden up in the air. Not what I would have expected based on what we were seeing early in the second half. It seemed like G2 was disjointed, but now they're right back to winning ways. And that man, Amanek, has to take a lot of the credit for this. Sure. He looked pretty absent on the first half, but his walking has been fantastic here. Mia, excellent deagle headshot. Nico's now surrounded by T's. Needs to just hold the line and stay alive. Putting into a more defensive position, but Dexter. He won't allow Nico to escape. Oh no. And, you know, we were just building up this idea like G2 were getting straight back into this one. Oh, no. And I just put the caster curse on Amanek. Because suddenly Spirit are on a four on two and Hunter's position is known. He's just about holding on though. Incendiary tossed up and over. That will isolate the palace player from the rest of the team. If he can drop the bomb down, there's every chance that G2 can punch their way back into that comeback trail. 40 seconds to play with some Dai Young on connector, but the bomb is still dropped out in the middle of the site. Yeah, I mean, you might as well go ahead and start filling out the bonus check for Hunter because he's absolutely saved the day for G2. It looked like a very dire situation when Nico got trapped in sight and got pinched from all angles. Hunter continues to wreak havoc here and ensure that G2 are out in front for this round. Jax will finish it off, and indeed, Hunter absolutely crushed it there 22 kills best for his team one of the best on the server and i feel like a huge sigh of relief must have just broken out in the comms after hunter pulled that play off oh, and this is this is why so many people were so excited about the prospects of hunter and nico playing together because although nico is going to get a lot of the star quality in the spotlight hunter is definitely up there as a very skilled player as you said saved the round for them no doubt in my mind that was a 2v4 now chopper though goes straight back in nullifying nico who's down on underpass and jack oh. tries to scurry away but he gets picked off in the back the fearlessness from sunday young to jump into the fire knowing that he would get the timing that was very snap communication from spirit and it nets them a huge benefit that was brilliant series of play there to get them the five on three 
But now G2 are once again on the back foot early in a round. Last time they were able to recover. Doing so here, though, would be a much taller task. They're going to have to take some gambles because they're this far behind so early. They're going to leave B-Slight somewhat open, let Amanek play the op off Cat, and they'll double up on the A-Site. Meanwhile, Spirit, they can take their time. Oh, the timing's unreal for Amanek. That's so unlucky. My goodness, I feel bad for him. You can understand why he's gone for that play as well. Because of a lack of utility and map control, they need something in terms right. of scouting, a safety net to fall on them. Unfortunately, though, all that's achieved is allowing Spirit that little bit more comfort on their endeavors through middle. Now, Hunt is still alive. He's already saved them once. That was a 2v4, but they're not pushing A. They're going to bypass the remainder of G2 and just walk across to a free B site. And I doubt that G2 with their current economic situation want to move off A. They just desperately want to hold on to these guns. But Chopper may not allow them to do this. He's actually up close enough in connector to feasibly go for this, knowing that their economy is hanging by a thread. Yeah, this is really tough here from G2. As you said, no real chance to go for this retaking B on Mirage. One of the hardest retakes in the game. Doing so 2v5 with limited economy. Might as well just go ahead and chalk it up. As they will indeed hold on to these weapons for the next round. Spirit edging closer to map point. G2's put up some good resistance here in the middle of the second half. But Spirit have captured control once more. Rebuying around these two rifles will be strenuous for G2. Only one of them can truly afford it the way that they would like to. How do they want to make their stand? Again, this is map point situation coming up here for Spirit if they can take the victory. Stroking his beard in the back is Spirit's staffer. I don't know if that would be a coach, analyst, whatever. I'm sure he's liking what he's seeing so far, though, Vince. Oh, I think he'll have a lot of respect for his, his team right now because not only have they kind of came back once in the oh. first half for an 8-7, they've actually kind of came back again. Jax with, with an armorless M4 events. Yeah, that's not something you see every day. Would have expected maybe he goes for a lesser weapon to get the armor. But again, that's the situation they were put in based on the economy. Oh, and Omnex has been spotted. Oh, it lands a shot anyway. That is huge for G2. That's the spark they needed. Especially considering that Sam Dae Young has been up there as one of the best players on the server. Yes. So that's a huge pick, a huge scalp to take. Minute left on the clock. Spirit now making moves through middle. Smoke's deployed both on catwalk and also in the window. Additionally, on the CT side of connector, where Nico is up close with the M4. Once that smoke clears, Mia may very well explode out with a flash alongside it. Nico holds the line. That's the bomb that's been dropped. And Nico goes in for seconds. Suddenly, only two players remain. It's Dexter, who has a ton of grenades. Still at disposal. Tossing them across, but it's Magix that has to pick up the slack. And, well, it won't be happening. Nico with those two kills from Connector was everything. Absolutely. Also, a lot of respect to Aminat getting that opening pick. I feel like we've seen a dance between him and Sum Dai Young multiple times throughout this half in those B apartments. And this time around, Aminat took the lead. Wins it. Economy getting drained once again by Spirit, Vance. If G2 can win this round and tie things up 14 apiece, they would put Spirit in a tough spot, but same could be said. This round feels like the linchpin type round for either team. Body block from Nico on the smoke. <laughs> nice. That's so brilliant. They might not expect window to be open like this, and now they have to pay more attention to it in their movements. They can't just take it for granted. Added stress to the round. That's exactly it. Nico doesn't even have to peek from window. He knows the fact he blocked that smoke will keep Spirit caught in two mines going forward. Yes. They throw a Molotov in there. That's extra utility they won't have when they explode out onto the site. So well done by Nico. Boost coming up as well here from Hunter. Something that Spirit hasn't seen before. As we are going to see Hunter jump up here looking for someone. Doesn't spot it. Has to, you know, respect be a part of the threat. We'll put the smoke up and Maybe retake the boosted angle in a second here. Nico just making sure window is being covered right now. 
like a time up a peak depending on how they choose to play out this round as hunter will now commit to this jumping up on top of the boxes will be tested by someday young soon some young gets the read that is impressive huge kill 40 seconds left spirit who are thinking and toying with the idea of hitting a the second the smoke and the famas spray goes through there they just instantly dip out they're headed to b and Jax is rotating off now realizes hold on they haven't pushed on any site just yet i should maybe mm -hmm. hold my ground but it will be Jax alone he has exactly. the ak and there's no rotation really in place yet either. He could be in a lot of trouble. He has to absolutely pop off here to give his team a chance. Nico gets a kill. In the meantime, though, out in middle, that's going to help things along. Jack's playing smart. Big headshot. Bomb's been tickled. Does he go out for the wide swing? He knows it's going to be a fake, but Magic's with a drive-by headshot. So impactful for Spirit and Dexter from Apps. Pops off Amanek. And in that kill... They need Nexa to rotate all the way around Catwalk. They know the orbs in apps. They'll be very cognizant of this on the approach. Every chance now for Spirit to clutch on for the 15-13 lead, but Nico, he's not done just yet. The A1S is back in action. Chopper's been tagged down. Dexter goes for the wide swing, gets the frag, but now Nico, he's coming in. He knows exactly where Dexter is. He's been in these situations so many times. Holds down Ooh. onto the side, the defuse, the bomb's got planted fully, but Dexter and Nico has stole the round away from Spirit. Oh my goodness, I bet you even Doctor Strange, looking at all the different possibilities of the universe, did not see that one, Vince. That was wild for Nico to be able to stick a diffuse off, as you said, not quite angled correctly. Was the Bond Dexter not able to find a clean shot onto Nico, who knows that his only path to victory is just locking the diffuse down, and he does it. What a crazy exchange that took place on B. Such a back and forth moment. Never really knew who was going to be in control. Once again, Nico given free reign in one of this time. He's actually looking for the fight and he finds it. A huge headshot on Samir. Now G2 had the man advantage early in this round. A chance to move towards map point. That diffuse could be the difference maker and oh, it yeah. should be mentioned that before that round before that moment nico was having a bit of a rough one he was definitely one of the weakest links on g2 just goes to show that that class is permanent however let's not get ahead of ourselves because spirit is still in with this they do counteract onto amanet jack gets aggressive the famasto will come out second best and some die young punishes him yeah, you could tell that G2 wanted to do something a little bit different there as their player at Ticket Booth got caught with the op. I believe that was Amanek. So Jax is looking to try to, you know, find some intel, maybe get the advantage back, but gets caught. And now instead, Spear are the ones to step ahead into this round. It's still plenty of clock left to play with. They have mid control. They're shuffling that bomb through apartments. We can very easily tell that Hunter with only the SMG to play with is very isolated at the back of this B site, no assistance even nearby. As we see Nexa gambling on this forward angle at A ramp, it's all gonna come down to Nico's op and how he chooses to rotate. It looks like the site's gonna be taking Hunter again, left alone. 25 seconds, MP9, SMG, tailor made for close angles such as this. When things get hot and heavy, the MP9 douses down the flames of spirit. And it could be in for more. Hunter picks up a third. He moves himself to 25 and more than likely G2 to 15. And Chopper gets caught in the cross. Hunter take a bow. Dude, it looked like Hunter was starring on the next edition of Naked and Afraid because he was indeed all by his lonesome with little to work with on that B site. But his movement was so good, especially after he got those first two kills to hug that pillar, to buy time for Nico's rotation into the kitchen. That was just a master class of maneuvering by Hunter to just eliminate options from Spirit. And now they are at map point. We could be going to overtime as Spirit can fight back here and now. And Vince, we, we know a thing or two about overtimes as a duo, don't we? Oh, we've casted a, a fair few, and I would love to see this go over time, Dust. I've got to be honest, I'm really enjoying this game. Oh, absolutely. I know the fans watching probably don't feel the same way. Well, if you're Spirit fan, you definitely do, because that's the, uh, the best possible outcome in this round. <laughs> but yes. G2... They've been looking great these last few rounds, and it just feels like we already we all speak about those moments of inspiration, mm -hmm. Dust. You know where you get motivated, you get that fire underneath you. That Nico diffuse for me was the moment for me too. And I feel like that just added another spark to it as well. I mean, Hunter had so much to do on his own in a three-on-four situation with just an SMG to spare, and he was able to make it happen.
So back-to-back -back hero plays, basically, from a G2 player. It's the Cousins coming through for the squad. Hunter looking to get aggressive here over on Catwalk. is going to get tested big time by several players. Spots a couple. Crossfire established, but Spirit coming out on top in that exchange. Jack's a different angle. They haven't used this too often. It's typically been on the site, and he does reap the rewards with the first frag. Low players coming in. Chopper down to 2 HP, and Jax very nearly takes down some Da Young. Drops him to a measly 9 HP. So two of the three are sub-10 health. But there's only two players left for G2. And Nico's put that A1S to use. Has really ignited his own form in these last four or five rounds. Amanek <gasps> spins up. What a headshot onto some Die Young. And that could be good enough. Dex has got 34 kills, by the way. This man has been unstoppable. An absolute mammoth. And he comes head to head. And he passes the test again. Nice. You said nice. 35 Classic. kills. Yeah. I bet you there's like a million Zoomers watching. They're like, what? <laughs> Speak of the devil. Opening kick, he went through that smoke, no fear. And Nico, you know he's human after that. Like, he's just pushed the smoke and out. You know, that's what he said. It works, though. It gets results. Yeah, it was really a case of Dexter being shackled for the first eight or nine rounds on the mm -hmm. CT side. So it's good to see himself just break those chains, push through middle. Now, Jax maybe getting a bit antsy down on ramp there is only magics over here it's not going to be an a hit they're actually pushing through connector so magic's position is still important jacks misses out the first shot they're wide swings in and magics has been put down as a result hunter elsewhere is oh. going and going deep into damage double frag for hunter and suddenly spirit are a player behind some die young was not anticipating the bait and switch from nexron being on tetris and it leaves dexter in a one on three I would not write this man off right now, but he doesn't have the AWP. It's the AK by his side. Knows what the first player is. He's more interested in where the second and third are. He's thinking about the clutch. Now sees the second players. Next up, scurries away back into the ramp. And Dexter knows where he is. The only downside is the bomb is dropped for Nexa. He has to come out and Dexter is so close to clutching again. But Nexa just holds on by a thread. And G2 regained the lead. Bro, that was a roller coaster ride. Right of a round if I've ever seen one, Vince. You see how it kicks off Dexter just styling on him at middle with the mid pick, but then you see just everything somehow go G2's ways after that. Somehow Jack's able to make that A ramp push work, somehow able to catch the, the push elsewhere as well, all across the site. But then Dexter makes you believe for a second he's about to clutch a 1v3, but Nexa just holds on. Double op in play for G2 into this round. They're around the head. This is MR3 16k overtime rule set. Nico already caught with one of those AWPs in the underpass position. Chopper also catching a player as well inside those B apartments. So it seems like a couple of the aces up G2 sleeves have turned out to not be what the poker table was looking for. Less aces, more jokers, I guess you could say there on that one, Dust. But Nico has mm. died first both rounds of overtime, by the way. He's had no impact yet. Last round, it was Dexter through the smoke. Fair enough, can't really hold that against him. This round, getting aggressive down an underpass and just giving across two kills to Team Spirit. So, pretty rough. Amanek, though, gets aggressive, makes the most of that aggression through apps, takes down some Dai Young and backs away. Yeah, they're kind of gambling over towards B. They've left A wide open for the taking at this point, as we are going to see that Hunter now drifts that way with the M4 towards Ticket. We see Amanek continuing to try to posture up at B apartments will spot nothing. So now he should know what's going on here, especially now that Hunter has spotted this at Connector, but he's playing behind Triple, not exposing himself to Connector. He's just trying to focus on A ramp. He needs to win this fight against Magix. That's his only hope. Or he can slide out for the perfect timing there, but Magix is quick to trade, and that's the problem. Three on two now in favor of Spirit with A side control, but this flank could be everything for Amanek. He's come all the way around for B apartments with this op, Vince. Oh, the timing. The timing was so grim, but still puts it down center mass onto Magix. And a low Mia treads very carefully towards jungle. Dexter was spotted, but comes back out again. A man you do not want to meddle with. The bombs also drop from his perspective in eyesight. Mia 
Maneuvering round towards CT. The bomb has been smoked. They tickle it, trying to draw Mir out into the open. But it's Nexa that goes in for the wide swing. And now Dexter needs to get the lineup on point. But Amanek returns fire, avenges Nexa, and gets the round. That was a five versus three that G2 just pulled off. Indeed, and it all comes down to Amanek re-aggressing B apps with the AWP, then flanking all the way around into A ramp, catching magics there. Gets the final kill of the round also and the defuse. We've talked about it time and time again throughout this game, Vince. Amanek on that CT side op has had so much impact round after round. And he's not been alone. We've seen Hunter pull off hero plays. Nico had a crazy defusal clutch. They've all stepped up and made individual plays happen when they've needed to. Dexter trying something different this round, peeking over the incendiary with the boost at A ramp. Unfortunately for him, no one's given him a look. Oh, he's like, okay, listen, you're not going to peek us. We'll peek you. We're just going to push straight through that smoke. Jax gets one, does get traded out instantly afterwards. And you see there's a player stuck on the site. That was Nexa. Only good for the one frag. Nico back to the wall. He's trying to bite up a little bit more time and allow his teammates to move in. They have the orping component of Amanek on catwalk watching through connector towards the site. So mm. Mia, although he does pose a threat, he needs to be careful because if he overextends, he could get picked off. Yep. That's the big problem, but he's boosting up on top spots. Amanex dome and now knows about that threat. Meanwhile, bomb will come up a ramp. A site is empty, except for Hunter playing back with the M4, but he could easily get smoked off. But you see these players continue to pinch onto a site. They will use the smoke to block off the jungle angle. So they know that they only really have to worry about ticket. They may be also concerned that someone from G2 has palace control. The bomb does go down. Right idea with the grenade, but just wrong lineup. Does no damage to some die young. Really well played by Spirit, by the way. They still had like a minute when all the action went down, so they just cooled their jets, waited, assumed G2 would go for a bit of a rotation. They did, and then they moved in afterwards and caught G2 in awkward positions. Great post plans. Now I've been assumed flashbang through. Nowhere near good enough though to deal with some die young. And although Amanek goes in for the peak, he does get the kill. The time is drawing ever so quickly, but Nico gets the timing now to some die young. And he is all alive. Surely not again. G2 out of the fire, the flames, the ebbs, and they really just picked up another clutch scenario with mere seconds to spare that is unbelievable a shutout on the first half overtime here from g2 now one away from taking the map and i just can't believe it as you said spirit seemed to be working out that three on three perfectly they were even able to dodge that flash from cd spawn they even temporarily had a three on two post plant but they just got caught backing up into jungle giving a free body away and then they just lost their fights from that moment forward. G2 just seemed to never run out of fuel in those individual moments. When they need a player to step up and land a shot, it's worked out for them. And now they just need one more. They're gonna change things up with a very quick palace push. Dexter has landed 40 kills and he's not done just yet. Molly up and over onto Palace. Spirit with another lead. This time though, a very different ball game. It's not G2 trying to retake, it's trying to aggress, trying to puncture through and perforate the site, pillage it if they can. And Dexter shutting down his Nexa has got them a step towards holding on. The thing is as well, Dust, there's every chance to argue that on another day, Spirit would have actually clean swept that first oh, yeah. overtime half 3-0. Yeah, they had a lot of opportunities. There have been a lot of close rounds, a lot of three on three to be two side situations in the late round in the post plant, but G2 just always eking them out. That round, they tried again to pick up the pace and do something crazy. It did not work out. I wonder if they will just go back to their slower formation, that 2-2-1, two, two, letting Nexa play passive towards A side, doing two middle, two B apartments to underpass, play that mid control, smoke off jungle. They've been so successful on these connector plays. We are seeing the aggression from some die on to try to disrupt things. Needs to get out of there. Has a sell-by date and expiry date in that position, especially if the T's are pushing up through underpass. So he takes his shot, he gets his information, he backs out. Very important. Spirit, no. There's still two more map points for G2. Mm -hmm. So one mistake could cost them everything. 
Now we see that G2 were trying to put that early presence at B Apartments with three players. They kind of had to back off a bit due to some utility. Hunter will now take the underpass position. He'll double up with Jax to try to ensure that mint control goes their direction. And so they are getting back to basics, getting back to their bread and butter that we saw them so successful with in the early first half of regulation where they were just setting up so many different types of attacks from this, you know, heavy emphasis on connector control. We're gonna see Nico now set up another smoke over here uh, inside that window rune to allow them to safely progress towards connector. Another smoke being banked to get inside of it. If they so choose, bomb is gonna come up a ramp. Palace control has been taken by Chopper. That could be a little bit of an X factor later, but he actually gives it up and jumps into sight. And this kind of plays into G2's hand now. Now they're gonna be able to come into a site. They might even be able to isolate Chopper on the site as long as they use their utility correctly and they time this perfect. And it looks like they are really onto the right jump, Vince. I I'm liking these two chances on this attack. Time though, time is working against them. 13 seconds left, but Chopper has made his last stand. And it's a stand that doesn't yield too much. Mia misses so many shots. Uncharacteristic for him. And maybe Dexter could watch this one. Get the three seconds left. He's going to be able to get the bomb. <laughs> no, he doesn't actually. And Nexa then spins around and takes his head off. Are I you don't know what I just saw. He jumped. Dude, he literally won the round because he jumped. Can you believe it? He would have died. He jumped to take a leg shot, and then he wins the round because of it because he had enough help to, to take a 1v1 fight afterwards. That's unreal. I've never seen someone win a 